the Lord, mighty prophet of the Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you, my son. Now, uh, I just wanted to add up something very small to what the Lord spoke yesterday in the Sunday service in Nairobi. I just want your listeners to know that uh, so much was spoken yesterday by the Lord regarding the entry of the church and also uh, regarding how the church can prepare and which church enters and then which one does not enter. And that's why I just wanted to add a little bit on what was said, because as the message was rolling out, you could almost hear that the Lord is saying uh, that there are those, there are those, that work in his house. Because he says, I saw them in the house, but I do not know what they were doing in the house. When the Lord says, he knew them not. But says to enter. I saw them in the house, but I knew them not. And then if you listen very carefully, he says, and the reason he says, I saw them in the house, they even fellowshiped at the tent in the house, meaning they were ministering, the ordinances of the Lord, executing uh, the ordinances, the sacrifice of the Lord, even Holy Communion and everything. He says, I saw them in the house, but I knew not what they were doing, so I knew them not. So, so you see, that is very, very powerful because uh, the church can use that town. The church can really use that at this hour, even to prepare herself for entry. Because he's saying that there are people, and, he's, and he went on to say, that, but I knew them not because, number one, they exalted not the person of Christ. They exalted not the blood of Christ. Number three, <clears throat> they exalted not the cross of Christ. They exalted not the, the power of Christ. They exalted not the righteousness of Christ. They exalted not the holiness of Christ. They exalted not. So you see, that becomes a very important point of entry for the church into this entire conversation on making sure they enter the eternal kingdom of Jehovah. Why do I say so? Because I realized that the Lord is speaking to the church and he's telling those people in the church and the entire Christian fraternity, the body of Christ globally, and he is telling them that, look, the hour is here. The Messiah is coming. And right now, the church is sitting on the verge of eternity, entry. And yet, he's also saying that there are certain people in the house, not certain people, quite the majority of them, though, because those I saw enter were fewer, really so few that I wouldn't want to say. It, 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 it can break your heart, you know, but I just want people to work on hard. Eh? The Christians and believers work on hard and enter. However, in saying that he saw them in the house, and he did not know what they were doing there. He knew not what they were doing there. And then at the end he said, therefore, I knew them not. But they said, no, but we ate with you at the table. You ministered, we ministered together. He tells you that there are people in the house of the Lord today. I mean, the entire Christian fraternity, I said. The body of Christ. Who have now been given the opportunity to serve the Lord. And they have simply not served him right. And to, uh, to, to, to escalate this, the Lord is essentially saying that every single Christian believer on the earth today, including the millions that are tuned in now, listen, is on a daily basis being afforded, being given an opportunity to serve the Lord. That in whatsoever you do, just waking up in the morning and be born again on that day, and walking around as a born again. He says, every single living being, living Christian, is on a daily basis being given the opportunity to serve the Lord. 
in whatsoever you do. Maybe you are a nurse in the hospital, you are a school teacher, you are a farmer, you are just a, a small biashara uh, and dogodogo, meaning these retailers, uh, hawkers selling small handkerchiefs and, and bread and whatever, pancakes. Every single person, regardless of the level of the status in society, is on a daily basis being given the opportunity to do the following, to exalt the person of Christ, to exalt the blood of Jesus, to exalt the name of Jesus, to exalt the cross at Calvary, to exalt the righteousness of the Lord, to exalt the holiness of the Lord. So this was such a mighty awakening when the Lord brought this to my attention. That you don't have to be at the pulpit to do this. That on a daily basis when every single Christian wakes up, they are given the opportunity, each one of them, regardless, maybe you are working as a shop attendant, or you are in the market selling in your stall, or you are a teacher somewhere, a doctor, a lawyer, it doesn't matter, a professor, a student in the university, a student in the, in the high school, on a daily basis, each person is always being afforded the opportunity to exalt the person of Christ, to exalt the name of Jesus, to exalt the glory of Jesus, to exalt the blood of Jesus, to exalt the cross of Jesus, to exalt the righteousness of Jesus, to exalt the holiness of Jesus. This is what the Lord is saying. And in that way, they can prepare that the Lord may not say, but I knew them not. So that is where people can begin to take spiritual audit on themselves. As in today, when I woke up, what did I do today in my life to exalt the name of Jesus, to exalt the person of Jesus, to exalt the cross of Jesus, to exalt the righteousness of Jesus, to exalt the power of Jesus? Maybe it involved getting up and looking for a cripple that walked on that day and take to the marketplace. And show people, go shop to shop. You don't have to do a crusade. Tell them, how are you today? Is everything all right? Yes. I am just passing by your shop. I want to show you this person that was born crippled is now walking. I'm walking around with this person to celebrate the power of Jesus, to celebrate the name of Jesus, the person of Jesus, blood of Jesus, cross of Jesus, everything on a daily basis. One does not have to be at the pulpit. That on a daily basis, every living person is given the opportunity, is afforded the opportunity by the Lord to exalt the name of Jesus. That is where the problem is. You may just be sitting in your office, you've been busy doing other things, maybe you're an accountant or whatever, but even in that accounting work you do, you're always given the opportunity to exalt the person of Jesus, exalt the name of Jesus, exalt the power of Jesus, exalt the blood of Jesus. Exalt the cross of Jesus. Exalt the righteousness of Jesus. Exalt the holiness of Jesus. Exalt the coming kingdom of Jesus. Every single person. In just the way you execute your work in righteousness, there you go now. Say, why, why, why have you done your accounting so straight and powerfully like this? So no, because I'm born again. I've received Jesus. The Jesus in me. I have to exalt him in my work. You, you know, in that way, even in your work, you can exalt Jesus. You have the opportunity to exalt Jesus and address some of the concerns that were raised yesterday. Exalting Jesus. You may be somebody doing something else, and today you are writing an email. And in your email, when somebody just looks at your email or your text message, the first thing they see, you have exalted the name of Jesus in that text. You have exalted the power of Jesus in that text. It may begin by saying, praise the Lord. Bless the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, today I am alive because, it's because he lives. Such a simple statement. But to exalt the name of Jesus in everything you do, each person on a daily basis is given that wonderful opportunity. Maybe an email. Maybe a text message that you begin to praise the Lord. Remember that John chapter 3.16 says, you know, this and that. 
to exalt Jesus. Remember that Jesus died for us. That may be the way you begin your email, a text message, your phone call. Each person on a daily basis, how you dress, how you walk, your honesty at work, how you execute your humble life. How to say, today I'm not lying. And start cutting lies out. Say, so, wow, you used to lie. Why are you li not lying now? Say, so, no, because I realize that Jesus in me, I have to exalt his name. I need to raise the power of the Jesus that gave me salvation. Because that power allows me to overcome sin. But each person on a daily basis is given the opportunity to exalt the person of Jesus. To exalt the name of Jesus. To exalt the blood of Jesus. Exalt the cross of Jesus. Exalt the power of Jesus. Exalt the righteousness of Jesus. Exalt the holiness of Jesus. Exalt the coming kingdom. The coming king. The coming kingdom of Jesus. That when that day arrives for entry, he will not say that, look, I saw you in the house. But I knew not what you were doing. So I know you not anyway. Because in your practice, neither exalt thee. You didn't exalt the name of Jesus. You didn't exalt the power of Jesus. So you can address that now. That is the blessedness the church has now from yesterday's message. And I've seen the Messiah come. And those he takes are few. He worried me so much. I woke up and began worrying. I said, wow, we need to increase, the, the number needs to increase. May the Lord bless you, Shalom. Mm -hmm.